Hello, my name is Assistant Professor Kate Offer and I'm a lecturer here in the Law School at UWA and I teach Torts and Evidence. Uh, my movie is about uh, using the lecture in the modern university and questions to whether it's still a valid method or mode of instruction. There's a bit of a feeling that we're moving away from in-person delivery to online delivery and I think whilst there certainly has been a move to that in the university sector, I don't think that's ever going to take over from the need to get together and to be physically together for students and for staff in a, in a learning environment. The big advantage of a university is that it does provide that opportunity for people to get together in a community of learning and be together. And I think there will always be um, the need and the desire for that to happen. Um, and I don't think a lecture is necessarily a bad thing. I think it can be a very useful method of conveying some important introductory concepts to students. I see a good lecture as one where the lecturer almost provides a bridge that the students can cross over, that they can, they can be introduced to the material and they can um, almost have their fear of the material removed and then they can cross over to where you are, hopefully after you have um, given them some enthusiasm and sort of engendered some excitement about the material that you're talking about. I think one of the downsides of the lecture is that it can be misused. Sometimes I think we see the word lecture in the timetable and think that that requires us to teach in a particular way, whereas I think a lecture is really just a situation. It's just an opportunity for people to get together. I think a bad lecture is one which is a 45 minute exercise in information transmission um, that is just a one way communication from lecturer to student. There's an old joke uh, that says a bad lecture is, well, <laughs> a lecture is where the notes of the professor pass to the notes of the student without going through the brains of either. And I think if it's just about information transmission, as I said, in a long 45 minute slot, people can't concentrate for, for that long. It's not really learning, it's just note taking. So the lecture can certainly contain some information transmission, but it shouldn't be the bulk of the lecture. I feel that the lecture should be used as an opportunity for, for some real learning to take place. And there's a number of methods that I think are really useful to do that, that I've been experimenting with in my own teaching. One of the first things that I've been trying and which I've found to be very successful is the use of online polling in lectures uh, and incorporating some opportunities for students to discuss and learn from each other in the lecture venue as well. So online polling is a very good way of keeping students engaged in a large lecture. It's based on Eric Mazur, who's a, a professor of physics at Harvard University, his concept of peer instruction. And so using online polling is a way of getting students to talk about concepts that we've learned, to think about how those principles might apply, and just nut out the way it might have sort of real world applicability as well. So that's been a particularly useful way of um, bringing more engagement into the lecture. So I'm Sarah Percy and I'm a professor of political science and international relations here at UWA and I do a lot of lecturing to quite large lectures so second year lecture with about 200 students and first year lectures with about 350 students. I really enjoy trying to make the lectures as interactive as possible. In my second year class I give them bonus points for asking a question in a lecture and for every proper question you ask you get a 2% bonus on your final exam up to a total of 5%. I teach international relations so there's obviously a lot of topical stuff in the news so in our first year unit at the moment I'm trying to get them to start discussions about the situation in Syria. I often try and stand at the back because when I ask them questions and I want them to answer I don't want the people in the front row to always be the ones whose hands I pick. So I have tried um, poll everywhere which is a online polling device. How I use it is I break them into small groups, I give them some time to discuss a concept, I have them nominate one person who's their voter, and they can put stuff up in the freeform texts. And all of those answers appear on the screen behind me, and then we go through and talk about them. I do think a lot of the interactive stuff, though, is just about setting the tone, that that's what you're going to do, that this is not going to be you standing up and talking to them and that you want them to participate. I'm Wade Jarvis and I'm an assistant professor in the business school and uh, particular emphasis on the marketing discipline. 
we're saying a one-way delivery of a lecture is not working. Uh, if you record it as well, you get less students turn up. So there's an issue in terms of getting students to participate. So I've been trying to blend a bit. Putting, I've got audio to the chapter online. My, my ideal is that I put the lectures online and then we do activities. And I've tried this in semester two and it's worked really well. It's been difficult because you're up against people being used to a lecture, so there's issues around logistics of what do you call it, so I had to call it a workshop. So the other thing I've tried to do is incorporate more demonstrations into law. This year what I tried was an exercise in um, students getting to be eyewitnesses. So what we did was we uh, surprised the students with an ambush. We had the, uh, the Blackstone president, who's the president of the Law Student Society, who was in on the, the game. He gave a short uh, talk at the beginning of the lecture and then he was ambushed by four naughty engineers. Again, we'd all set this up ahead of time. It all happened very quickly. Students weren't expecting it and then they had to give an eyewitness account. We might have that floor ball ticket sales go on sale tomorrow at 12pm. Um, so make sure you... Yeah. Oh. 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 It's a good experiment because there's a lot of literature uh, about how difficult it is to be an eyewitness and how unreliable eyewitness testimony can be. And so it was a really good opportunity for the students to be in that position of having to give eyewitness testimony and see for themselves just how tricky it, uh, tricky it was. I think it was good for the students to actually get to experience something uh, rather just, than just read about it as a theory. For me, one of the reasons why I place a premium on people coming to my lectures in person and actively participating is because it's the conversations that happen before and after the lecture which are as critical to learning as conversations that I, well as me talking in the lecture. My thoughts is the lecture is going to stay but we need to get them doing some skills value in there not just knowledge. So as far as universities exist in the physical realm which I think they will continue to do, the lecture still has a valid place in universities and university teaching. So let's make the lecture something really special. Let's make it somewhere where true connection can occur, where students can be engaged, where active learning can take place.